The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Greetings, everyone, and thanks for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Andrea Spenokratis. I am a product manager for content and certification with Ansible, and I'll be your MC as well as a co-presenter for today. Now, we're really excited to have back with us the Cisco ACI team, um, and our webinar is entitled Cisco ACI with Ansible Collections. So uh, really excited. Thank you so much for being here. Our other co-presenter today is Lionel Erko. He is a technical market engineer for, for ACI at Cisco, and he's also the team lead for uh, as a developer for all the collections as well. Um, so before we jump in, I also want to introduce Ravi Balakrishnan and Devarshi Shah, who are panelists. So they may not be speaking, uh, but they will be helping to answer questions. And that's a really important part. So if you do have a question, please note that you will be on mute. Everyone is on mute, except for us, obviously. So if you have any questions, please put them into the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel. So again, uh, questions will go there. We'll answer them as we go. And if some are super cool, uh, we will try to answer them uh, in person at the very end. Uh, reminder that this will be recorded, and I probably say this to many people, is this recorded? Yes, this is recorded. So if you have to leave early, or if you're not seeing this yet and you come late, uh, we'll actually have this on the Ansible webinars uh, portion website, and we'll actually have it co-listed with the ACI team as well. So we will make sure you can get to this uh, if you can't make it or have to leave early. Um, this will probably be posted probably by the end of the week. We're pretty good about that, so keep an eye on that. Uh, and if you've registered, obviously, you will get notified that it's been published. So thank you again for joining us, and uh, let's kick things off. Next slide. So we're going to talk about a little bit. We split this into two parts. So we're talking about Ansible a little bit, and then we're going to talk about um, the introduction uh, into ACI. So as we move into Ansible project status, some of you may not know what's going on with Ansible itself, with the upstream project. Uh, and then may not know what collections are. So we're going to talk about collections and then move into uh, ACI uh, and then an awesome ACI demo. Hopefully the demo gods will be with Lionel today. And then we'll go into a QA and a if we have time. So uh, let's just jump in to the next slide. So the Ansible project, everyone hopefully knows and loves it. Um, it's very popular. It's on the top 10 list for all GitHub pro upstream community projects. It is so popular uh, that it's actually burying um, the, the project maintainers. And what I mean by that is you're probably, you probably know that Ansible itself is, um, contains everything, right? Ansible 2.9 is the latest uh, upstream GA product um, uh, for the community. And it, com it includes all of the, uh, the foundational pieces to actually make Ansible work. Uh, and then uh, it includes all content as well. So content would be plugins, modules, uh, anything like that. When you do a pip install Ansible, you get everything. You get about 4,500 to 5,000 items. Now, that's great. It's convenient, but it's kind of difficult to maintain, right? So think of us as a, so since it's like make an example of ACI, every time an ACI change needs to be made, it has to be committed to the upstream Ansible GitHub tree and then it's only released every so often as Ansible is released. So our cadence has typically been six to nine months, right, between Ansible releases. Now, that's that's okay for stability, but if if the ACI team wants as some new cool things that they want to release, having to actually do that um, uh, and wait six to eight months is really uh, really painful. So. The goal here is to split out the content from the actual base executable. So you're going to start seeing um, as we move forward into Ansible 2.10, we're calling Ansible 2.10 base. Ansible 2.10 base is a very uh, slimmed down version of Ansible that has maybe about 200 to 250 items. Um, if you're a longtime Ansible person, uh, think of Ansible 0 0.9, like way back in the day, right? Very, very small, lightweight. Um, and then we actually will have all the content as uh, balled up into collections. So we'll talk about collections in a second. Um, next slide. So once you actually break this out, right, um, step one was to break out the base executable from the content. Um, the idea here is now how do you reintegrate it so that it's consumable, right? 
the last thing people want to do is install a base, 2.10 base, and say, I want everything, right? Um, they're going to want that anyway. So for community members, we're still going to have an Ansible 2.10 release. It'll be shortly after 2.10 base. Uh, as of today, 2.10 base is uh, the beta uh, for that is slated for the end of this month, uh, which is May. And then the, uh, the generally available upstream in, uh, in July, right? So once we actually have a 2.10 base GA in July, we actually will be able to create or reintegrate all of our collections and create Ansible 2.10. So this is just a high level uh, kind of review. If you don't know what's going on in the Ansible project, this is obviously larger than, than an ACI discussion. So if you're, if you're an Ansible person, it's good to know kind of what's coming from the community side. Next slide. So we talked about collections and this is extremely, extremely important. Um, if there's one thing, you're gonna have to know uh, when you when Lionel starts talking, he's gonna say the word collection a lot, right? So an Ansible collection, what is it, right? Exactly. Uh, it's basically a simplified and consistent content schema. Well, what is that? Okay, so you know you probably know what Ansible roles are, or an Ansible module, or an Ansible plugin, right? Typically, those have been kind of a very on a very flat. Uh, it's been very flat, and if you wanted to kind of um, distribute those that content. You had to do it individually. The nice thing about a collection is it's one abstraction higher than all of these. So a collection contains all of these uh, artifacts that you know and love. So an, an Ansible collection um, can contain a bunch of modules, a bunch of roles, a bunch of plugins as a self-containing, uh, contained way, portable means of distributing Ansible content. Um, so you actually are being able to standardize how this is actually organized uh, in a in a very uh, consistent way. Um, the nice thing here is we're now moving into semantic versioning. So versioning will be uh, moved into there. So you'll we'll know major, minor, and patch releases. So Semver will be utilized across the collections. Um, and it's very portable and flexible. Um, so collections are the, the way forward. Collections are typically delivered as uh, tarballs. Um, and then delivered via a couple of different platforms. And I'll, I'll talk about that. So before we move on, make sure you know, an Ansible collection contains what was before modules, roles, plugins. Every, all the constructs, all the things you know and use today are gonna be uh, contained within a collection. Next slide. So we now know uh, everything about the what. So now you know what collections are. Um, and you know how it's set up, how are you actually going to get these things, right? How are you going to actually deliver these collections if they're not part of the Ansible distribution? Um, well, it, it could be part of 2.10, but out of band, the whole idea of having a collection is to be able to update it quickly, asynchronously, and then release it to the community so that people can use it. So there's two ways of actually consuming Ansible content. The first, you probably recognize Ansible Galaxy. This has been the traditional place for where uh, the community goes to publish Ansible roles and have been able to uh, download and install Ansible roles. Now, Ansible Galaxy was recently uh, uh, you know, enhanced to support delivery and distribution of collections. So now Ansible Galaxy is now the de facto place uh, directory for downloading uh, collections as well as roles, right? This is your community supported location. Um, it's been extended for collections, like I said, and this is where you get the latest and greatest, right? So this is, you don't have to wait six to eight months. Um, you, get the, you, you get the bleeding edge and you can get it right away from, from Ansible Galaxy. So now that we have this, we had to create a new means for enterprise customers, right? Um, as much as we wanted to cater to the people's like, I want the latest and greatest now, 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 there are enterprise customers that say, you know what, slow down a little bit. We wanna make sure that with the content that we have, is stable, right? They expected the stability of the content as well as the foundational components. So what we did was we created Ansible Automation Hub, which is a managed service on the cloud.com, um, which actually hosts, it looks it looks similar to Galaxy, but it, it hosts the certified jointly supported content by Red Hat and the Park. And this is where, so just so you know, ACI content is in both places, right? ACI is currently in Ansible Galaxy today, and it's also an automation hub as well. 
right? So uh, Automation Hub is great for the enterprise use case. You get access to advanced analytics. Uh, if you're an Ansible subscriber, an Ansible customer, you'll start to understand uh, utilizing Ansible Tower and Ansible Automation Hub. You can start understanding how your users are using your modules and collections to better understand uh, workflows, uh, cost management, et cetera. Um, and again, this is your slow and steady. We want to make sure that Ansible Automation Hub is your, you know, the, the de facto place for enterprises, enterprise users, um, to get content that was is as rock solid and, and fully supported. You'll probably have, you'll start seeing some additional uh, webinars around this, or we're moving towards a, uh, a general availability release for a lot of the life cycles and support around this. Uh, we'd like to have the, the content that Ansible distributes and writes to be supported for at least two years, right? It, we, we aren't able to do that with Galaxy, but we will be able to do that with Automation Hub. So stick around and stay tuned later this year for more information around that. Next slide. Okay, so let's see, what does this mean with ACI? Everyone's here for ACI, and I know we're going to get to it. Only a few more minutes of me, and you're going to hear the good stuff. So before you understand that, uh, before you hear from about that, you have to understand what does Cisco ACI look like now that it's outside of the distribution, right? We, we talked about Galaxy. We talked about Automation Hub. Where is this stuff? So you can see that we now have name, the, the concept of namespacing. Uh, namespacing is uh, typically where the top level uh, vendor is, um, and we've actually utilized Cisco as a top level of namespace. So you'll start to see what we call a fully qualified collection name. So at the very bottom, you'll see namespace.collection.asset, right? It could be a module, a plugin, whatever. So you, you typically say when you actually reference, let's say you're running Ansible today, you're typically used to running or executing the ACI tenant module, right? Um, in the future, you'll be able to say cisco.aci.aci tenant, and that will be very specific. That's your fully qualified uh, uh, collection name. Very similar to Automation Hub as well. So this is actually um, this is actually very very similar. It's still cisco.aci.aci tenant. Uh, it's just you get your API key uh, differently. Your download location is a little different. Um, content may or may not be the same. Depends on the life cycle of the actual content. Uh, but this is where you actually will download uh, the content specifically from Automation Hub. So this is what it's going to kind of look and feel. So as we move forward, next slide. So here's the you know TLDR. I'm not going to go into this. You can also take a look. So if you're a developer of Ansible content, um, this is typically what you would do for collections. Uh, you would do an init. You would init, initialize a collection by doing and everything. By the way, is through the Ansible dash Galaxy command line tool. This is your gateway into uh, you know initializing, building, uh, distributing, uh, publishing, and then actually downloading content from from either Galaxy or Automation Hub. So this is you can initialize the collection. It's got a format. You know, it's got like a schematic. It's got a skeleton. You just kind of fill in the blanks. Um, you do your sanity testing. That's probably the that's the bare minimum. Um, we would recommend doing unit tests and integration tests in addition, right? Who doesn't like quality code and quality quality playbooks, quality uh, content? Um, so make sure you you do that as part of developer. Um, once you actually have your collection ready to go uh, from source, then you hit the build. Uh, and when you actually build the collection, it will generate the tarball that, collect, that actually has everything uh, as part of the collection that can be distributed, or it can then be published to uh, Galaxy and or Automation Hub. Uh, so it's that it's there. And then if you're a user, number seven here is you know if you're just a user of content, this is how you install a collection, right? So you do Ansible Galaxy collection install, and then you do Cisco.aci, right? That's how you're going to get the, the actual Cisco ACI collection. So that's very, in a nutshell, all of this stuff, these, this, is very, this is very slim down. We have a developer uh, guide on Ansible.com. Uh, let's take a look on our docs section. If you're interested in how to develop a collection or use a collection, we actually have guides there. So we didn't want to go too much into that here. Next slide. Uh, there we go. All right. So that's it for me. You don't have to hear about me anymore. I'm going to I'm going to hand it over to Lionel and he's going to start talking about Cisco ACI and then give you a demo. Thanks, Lionel. Thanks, Andres. Um, hi, everybody. So I'm going to talk a little bit about ACI and then I'm going to jump into showing you the collection because I think that's, that's the most interesting piece. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Cisco ACI. So Cisco ACI is our uh, multi-cloud networking solution from Cisco, and it started in the data center and expanded, but the main goal is to provide consistent um, security and connectivity uh, policies across the different places where your data center today runs. Um, the idea is also to provide a single pane of glass and automation um, across the, those different environments. One of the key concepts in, in ACI is that you don't talk to each of the switches that you manage. You talk to a controller, which in fact abstract all of those switches and create one large log logical switches. So it's like we, you would have one gigantic switch that you can stretch wherever you want, um, and you always talk to it through a consistent API that you can easily automate. And the good thing is that that's link us directly into Ansible and allowing, allowing us to provide the, that, the additional level of automation through Ansible and connect that to your different uh, other pieces of your infrastructure that you manage through Ansible. If we look at the uh, ACI lifespan and what we have been doing of, uh, of ACI over the last six years is that we started in the main data center, the middle piece there, which is where most of our customers are uh, at their data center. But we have seen people evolve the data center outside of the, 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 the normal confine of, of a physical data center into what we call remote locations, smaller sites, colocation facilities, and then we expanded that also into the public cloud, um, where we have uh, people wanted to connect Azure, AWS, or other cloud providers together. And so through those various versions of SCI that I'm showing here, and the, the, the various uh, capabilities we have bring with multi-site, with virtual SCI, and with cloud SCI, we are now able to provide this connectivity across all of those uh, elements. And this really brings me to, to show you the, the the value of this. We are providing a consistent configuration way for all of those devices. And then that consistent way is managed in a fashion that's easier to automate for, for, for people. So we have a great API that can be used for it by everybody, and that's what we are using in our collection. And if I dive a little bit uh, lower, because I want to sh explain you a little bit of how do we stretch across those different domains. One of the constructs I want to mention is um, the multi-site orchestrator. So we have two levels of management, if you want, in the SCI uh, world. EPIC is our controller, which manages a local fabric or a bunch of switches together. It also have, has a cloud version, which is called Cloud EPIC, which can manage the networking in one of the clouds. The multi-site orchestrator is another level of abstraction on top of it, which can manage those different pieces. This is important because depending on your use case, you might want to talk directly to the EPIC or you might want to automate to the multi-site orchestrator. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you uh, a bit later is that I'm going to talk about both. So I'm going to run through both of them and show you what's the, the difference, what do you do where, and what do you do uh, for each. But in a nutshell, EPIC will manage the local stuff like interfaces, like where you connect elements in your data center, where the multi-site orchestrator will manage the more um, logical elements that you want to extend or stretch between those different data centers. So that's, that's really the, the key points in between those, those different elements. Now, why are we here today? Why are we, we as Cisco and Ansible joining together uh, to deliver this, this content? One of the key pieces is that we think that people will move towards what we call infrastructure as code, which is the, an automated way of, of deploying your, um, your technology stack, not just the networking, but the whole stack. That makes more robust. You can, you can uh, manage this in, in source uh, versioning and rely on best practices that have been used in the software industry. We think that's really a big element. And because people are using tools already, we want to, that you add the network into your existing tool sets. We don't want you to use a different tool sets to manage the network. If you're already using Ansible to manage your, um, your server configuration, maybe uh, your deployment of your application, the network should just come in. That will help your team, that will uh, move the, all the teams together, will avoid uh, division, and it, it will really create a consistent experience across all of the domains. 
it doesn't matter if you if it's one if it's compute domain or not compute domain if it's networking if it so it doesn't matter you use a consistent um, experience systems and elements now one of the things i want to um so one of the elements we've been working on that in, in Cisco is a large uh, portfolio of collections. So some of those are already available today in modules. But if you are moving to 2.9, as Andreas said, we have to provide them as collections because that's, that also allows us to develop more and innovate more. So if we look at what we already have today, on the left side, you will see the uh, three uh, collections that were already published to, today. So we have the NXOS modules. If you want to talk to a specific switch outside of ACI, we have are those modules available? There's more than 80 modules there. And if we look at more the ACI side, we have the API controllers modules, which we call ACI, which are in the Cisco ACI collection, and it's mostly using the API of, of the APIC. We have more than 65 modules. And then on, on next to that, we have the multi-site orchestrator, um, which is, as I said, that managers of multiple APICs. And it provides a, around 30 plus uh, modules today. This is a different collection. It sits around the Cisco MSO collections, but they live in different uh, collection names so that we can manage them separately. Now, if you have a request for, if you are using them, if you have questions, if you have requests on new modules, don't hesitate to reach us to the GitHub. We have put the links a little bit later. Um, you can request new modules and elements. We would, we would greatly uh, want to hear back from you. On the, on the right side, you are seeing what we are working on right now. So aside from managing and adding more to the existing uh, left collections, on the right side, we are today working on releasing a DCNM uh, collection, so a collection to manage our other uh, network manager, um, so that DCNM, Data Center Network Manager. And then we're also working into integrating our network assurance engine, which is our, if you want, verifier of configuration um, the, to, to the, your tool set. So, why are we doing that? Our goal is that we should provide you a way that before you push the change config you are building with Ansible, we want you to verify this configuration change through our network assurance engine to make sure that this is not going to break your network or there is no overlap of subnets or anything you would have built um, in there and that might happen if you push that, that through. And so, and we don't really want you to do that manually. So because uh, Ansible allows us to generate the configuration for SCI, we can push it to a, a network action engine and we will then be able to decide if we go forward and push it to APIC or MSO or not. So this is really the next step into uh, the evolution of, of our collections. Okay, so I've covered what's basic of SCIs, why are we doing this, uh, what is um, the collections that we have and what we are planning to do. Now I want to discuss a little bit more about how do you start to use the Ansible, the SCI Ansible connections. Like what's the best way, what, it is, what do you do? And this will lead me into our demonstration on how to do those different steps. So my, my big comment is that you should start simple. Like don't try to automate the moon first. Just pick one task, pick a task that you want to automate. What we have seen customer generally wants to do is repetitive tasks, right? So interface configuration, if you want to configure a ton of interfaces the exact same way, um, that's, that's one way on APIC. Another way is to build a cookie cutters um, template, like a tenant a VRF or an EPG, um, which is some of our construct, um, are, and you want to replicate that uh, for 10 customers or 10 uh, different divisions in your company. This is a very easy way in, in there. And then the last one is I want to assign different um, ports to VLANs to APG. So I want to mess with where do I deploy my network. And that's the third one where people manually would do those steps. So for those three tasks, those are really where I would start. I would pick a task that I don't want to do over again and over again, and then I will automate it. And then when you have automated th those tasks, then try to see what other tasks adjacent to it, or what requirements you may need to that. So start to stitch them together. Like we will, I will build the interface configuration that I need before assigning the VLAN into it, right? So this is really the, the way I would start my project and the way we are gonna start um, this element. So let's stop talking about it.
let's do it. Let's work together into building this, um, this automation. So I'm going to jump out of the slide and jump into uh, my setup. So just to get you a little bit started, so this is my, uh, my desktop. We can see that I have already started an Ansible project. So I have my, an inventory file. I have my uh, playbook. And then I have some variable that I have defined. So if we look quickly at my inventory file, it's a very simple inventory. It only contains APEC right now. It's just very simple. I didn't put the variables to connect to APEC in there. I, I put everything in my, uh, in my variable files, which contain everything you need to connect. I'm currently using, I will show you later. I'm currently going to use password authentication, but later on I'm going to show you how you can evolve it. Now, if I take one simple task, and the task I told you, for example, that a lot of people do is configure uh, uh, an interface uh, configuration. And so here I've picked up one of the tasks that I usually uh, have to do a lot and repetitively, which is configure a virtual port channel. Because the port channel requires you to create to create a different configuration for every port that groups them together, right? So every group requires this configuration. So for that, I'm I have to, to create this, this element manually. And if we look, for example, in, in Epic, let me just log back in. So this is our Epic. This is our management uh, controller. So I will just jump directly into um, my interface. So I'm going to show you where I should normally de de develop this. and. So normally I would go here, and I, for every group of interface, I will run through the creation of this this element. There's a lot of fields that you can fill. Not all, all of them are, are important. So in this case, I will go here and create each of them. Now I don't want to do that. I want to put to manage my infrastructure as infrastructure as code, and so I want to manage everything through Ansible. So the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, terminal. I'm going to install Ansible 2.9. So in my case, I'm working in a virtual environment. So in my virtual environment, I'm uh, running Ansible uh, 2.9, 7. And then on top of that, I have installed the collection. So I've installed the, I have used the Ansible-Galaxy uh, collection install, and I have used Cisco.ACI. So it automatically download the latest one from Galaxy or, it, or from Automation Hub, and then it, it stitch uh, your system uh, and allow you to use it. So after that, there's, it's very simple. You can just create a playbook, and in your playbook, you can just call our module. In this case, our module is called ACI Interface Policy Leaf Policy Group, which is just the name of, of the, the object we're trying to create. Because in ACI, every configuration is nothing more than an object in, um, in a tree. Um, that's, that's what we, we call it. We call it the management information tree, and that's really the whole configuration is just objects. In this case, we have a few parameters that we need to, to, to use. So we will define where do we connect and how do we connect. We will use password authentication as first. As I use the self-signed certificate on my APIC, I need to disable the, the verification. And then I'm using a few settings. The LACTAP lat, lat, nodes allows me to create a VPC, so a, a multi-chassis link aggregation, if, if you don't know about a VPC. And then a few settings, the name of the server, the, conf the configuration I want. Those are related configuration that I'm referencing to make sure that it's using the correct elements. Let's try it, right? Let's, let's try to run it. So just so before I run it, I just want to make sure that everything is correct. So I have built a, a, a source repository. I'm checking that everything is done. So the change I have made, the, the creation of this playbook is, is saved in source uh, repository, so now I can, I can call it. So let's just do that. So let me call my playbook, which is called aci.yaml. So once I call the ansible.yaml, it's going to go and it's going to push my port group. So if I go back here, we should see after a few seconds that it comes back and it's created it. If you look at the parameters we have passed, they've been created and created that. That's kind of easy, right? This is just creating an ansible uh, playbook with one element. The value is that we should be able to easily scale this. The goal would be to, what should I be able to do if I want to add not one, but 10 servers? So one of the things you could do is you could, for example, add a with sequence 
element, which will allow you to loop through one to 10 with a format of server. I have to edit my um, server policy group here to make sure that I'm using the name, and then I can just try to create 10 of them. So let me save this. Let me make sure that everything is correct. So I have a file to add, and I'm gonna commit, git commit. Ah, new servers want to go faster. Okay, so I'm good. Now I push, right? So I always commit so that I have a trace of what I've done and I can go back and everything. So let's push. I repush it. Now I use a loop. So the with sequence is a loop. So it's gonna go through and create each of them. We see that the first one was already there because I already created it before, but then it started to create the other one. So if we go back to Epic, we can see that it's gonna start to create each of them. We see them here first, and then it's gonna refresh the whole table after. So I have very easily you now stretch from creating one VPC for one server to 10 VPCs for 10 servers. Now, this is good if your servers are called server one to 10. Most of people have servers with names, they like them, it's more like pets than cattle, right? So they want to, to be able to name them. And also, this is very, um, those tasks are sequential because it's a loop. It will do one task after each other. What we want is we want to use the power of Ansible to be able to move our tasks uh, in, in parallel. So let, let's do that. So what we can do is add a few servers to our inventory. Just for a shortcut, I'm uh, using this to make them, uh, to create them. So I'm just adding a few servers in my inventory. Now, if I go back here, this is not gonna work anymore. So I'm just gonna change to servers, and then I'm gonna change the um, the naming. I don't need my sequence anymore, but I do need to change a few things. Now that I'm using another resources server, I have to delegate to local to localhost, right? I have to make sure that I run it for myself. So, because if not, because I'm using a controller, I don't connect to the server and do something. And then I need to change this because um, this is not what I, what I need. I need to use the inventory else name to push it. Okay, we are good. Let's check our source. Okay, let's. And then let's, let's run our uh, playbook. Now, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna start creating those 10 other servers. What did I do? Let me check. While he's checking that, you can see in some of the playbooks, you can see where the collections are being actually defined. So previously, you would just see ACI interface policy, the policy group. You can see it's actually fully qualified there uh, as part of the actual task. And uh, you could actually uh, set up, you could actually keep your same uh, syntax. And, and actually, there's a, a new area. You can actually have a collection section of your playbook. So if all of your tasks are, are coming from the same from the same uh, collection, it will actually uh, pull from there. So there's two ways of actually referencing collections. Uh, this way that uh, Lionel has done is, is fully qualified for each task, or you could actually have it actually referenced um, playbook wide using the collections um, keyword uh, above the tasks themselves. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm stalling here to hopefully he can get the, the, the demo gods uh, on back on his side, but uh, as you can see from the, the playbooks, it looks very, very similar in a, in a collections world, right? Yes, I'm trying to get the demo guys with me, but they are not very happy right now. Let me see if um, there are the ideas. Some folks writing in, it could be the host line or the host name, change the host name. Host not BSEO. 
We'll see. Host not be. This is good. Yeah, but that's. So this is just the cleanup. I'm just making sure that uh, I'm just re running that. Let me rerun my the right playbook. Okay, so that's interesting. Let me try something very quickly. Yeah, we've got time. So this is actually it's, it's <laughs> this is this is good, right? This is a. This is real world. Okay. Yes. Collections. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going and I'm going to make sure that I'm using the the right collection. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do Ansible collections. Uh, it's Ansible Galaxy collection install Cisco ACI. Okay, let me do that into another magic window. So, so as he does that, uh, we want to make sure you all understand that um, a lot of this stuff is also available online. A lot of, of resources, I'm not sure if you saw, there are a couple of blogs that went out this week. Uh, one was on, on Cisco side, cisco.com. Uh, we published one uh, around Ansible Tower, utilizing ACI as an inventory in, as part of Ansible Tower. So uh, we actually have some, some, new, some new content from uh, on the blog side. Uh, if you're looking for more information around ACI uh, and Ansible. So there's, there's some stuff out there. Um, you know, one question that came up uh, actually, um, is and maybe Robbie, if you could come off mute, was if there was some um, some ACI content uh, plan queued up for Cisco Live. I know Cisco Live is going to be a a virtual uh, event here coming up. Um, is there going to be some of this uh, stuff as part of Cisco Live? Yeah. So um, you want me to answer that? Sure. So we have a digital Cisco live event, and uh, we have lots of people registered, several thousand. So one of the uh, interesting things that we are offering to customers attending the digital event is, uh, you know, um, a DevNet, uh, you know, sponsored demo session on network automation, data center network automation, and we are uh, including the ACI Ansible as part of that. So definitely, you know, there will be a lot of exciting opportunities for uh, attendees in this webinar. And if they happen to attend the Cisco Live Digital event, look up to some uh, cool things in the demo. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Looks like you have, you have uh, Lionel, you have hosts set to servers right there on your screen. Hosts are set to servers. Um, yes. Is that correct? Yeah, that should be correct. So normally I should be able to run this for every task, and then I only are, uh, but this is not correct. It's a, yeah. But it still doesn't, it's okay, let's, um, I will check that. Let's let's step forward and I will move to the next step and start to explain it and then see if the, the demo got sketched with me. So while I, I start progressing. So normally this should have created you in parallel. You see it's executed way faster. Um, it's just go, go that. One of the things you, you, you will face as an issue is um, in terms of the authentication. Um, yeah. And I just move. Um, so I'm just going to move to the next, next one. So one of the things you can do is uh, move the is change the uh, oh. so what you can do is to change to uh, certificate authentication. What you would have seen if that demo would would have worked is that some of them would have worked and other would have failed through authentication issue, because ACI has a rate limiter on the number of connections. So if you start to do like a lot of parallel stuff with the ACI connection, it's good to switch to uh, certificate based authentication 
because in that case, we just authenticate the certificates and we, we can uh, increase the number of, of uh, parallel connections. So this would make you uh, able to do the, the same thing the, um, and be able to do the, those in parallel. So I'm just going to retry it once, but I don't think it's going to go through this time. Either, yeah, I still have. Uh, uh, let me just check because that might just be what's annoying me. Um, anyway, so this is just allowing you to do those elements uh, together and being able to uh, create those different uh, connections between the elements. Now, the next step that I, I was talking about earlier, right, is if I want to set it up, I want to, I have built one element. Now I want to grow it. And one of the ways you can grow it here is that you have related policies here that have been created and that you might want to develop. And so one of the elements you can, you can do is you can look at um, building that related policy. So I did it earlier and that's why I'm, I'm just going to check out the branch. Um, that's available. The code will be available for you after it when I fix it. Um, and so you can start to build the related missing pieces. So earlier we were we were uh, giving you a relation to this policy, which is a CDP policy. And then now here I can build my, my CDP policy. I can say I want both enable and disable to be uh, available. So you can build each of the pieces and start to make them work together. So in this case, I'm stitching the different pieces together. So that when it pushes the configuration, you have a, a complete configuration that starts to build up. Now, this is really the main piece of the, the SCI, right? You take the elements you want to, to automate and then you move them into your, your playbook. And then when you have pushed that playbook, you make sure that it's, uh, it works and it, it's uh, repeatable. Now, the, now that we, I have shown you this, I'm going to move into the MSO section, right? So this is really on uh, SCI, so it goes into directly the SCI fabric and it creates it for you. And then now we're going to go into the multi-site orchestrator, which is its own set of API, which allows you to manage more than one uh, SCI location. The construct here is slightly different, so you have to, to get uh, through that. But if you are used to multi-site orchestrator, you, you will be fine. So, the first one that we're going to do is we have to create tenants the same way you would do it at on-prem. And so this is the first step, right? We are, we are doing that second. Uh, so earlier I was talking about a few use cases. The second one is the cookie cutter template. And for example, the first thing you do in your cookie cutter template will be to create a tenant. So to be able to do that, what I'm just going to do is um, I'm, I'm going to go and check out my branch. Just give me one second. Okay, so I'm going to go and check out the branch which has my MSO element in there. Check out MSO. And so there you will see now I have a new MSO file. And if you look at this template, it's very simple. Again, one task at a time, you start and then you build up from there, right? So the first element that you do is you fix this MSO, um, so you fix that. Now, I'm not calling directly the, the fully qualifying domain. Um, collection name where I was doing here. Another way you can call the collection is just reference it when you load the, the, uh, the playbook. So in this, play, in this uh, playbook, I can just refer to cisco.mso, and then every time I, I call an element, it refers to cisco.mso. It's also a way to shorten them because they can become quite, quite long, at least in our case, because we have long, long names. So if I take this, um, and we, we have a look at the inventory. Now I have just my MSO. This is the only one I'm, I'm running. Um, and so we can just start and run this playbook. And I hope that the gods are back with me. So we can see that now it's changed. It has put the change to MSO. If I come to MSO and I refresh my page, you will see that the tenant A has been created. So same thing, right? I've created a tenant. I could do a look now and create 10 of them. I could do a system and create 100 of them. But the, the idea is there is that I can easily create any elements that I know and by referencing the right module. Now, what I want to do now is I want to build on top of that. I want to add this next piece of it. 
And the next piece in, MS, in MSO is you would go to schema and you click at schema. And then it will ask you to pick a tenant. So what, what I want to do is add this, this pieces. So let me just check out my next piece, which is the, the schema piece. Um, let's just get this running. And so I'm going to pick the schema. And uh, so you will see that here I, I know I have, if I go in my MSO, I know I have my MSO tenant, which I already had, and now I have a simple schema that I create. And I'm just using an anchor here to avoid repeating some of the, the element because all of those parameters are avail available here um, automatically. So let's, let's push this, right? So this is just a, temp uh, a schema with a, a single template inside it. So now it has already created, it had already created the, the, the tenant, so it doesn't need to recreate it. So now if I go here and I refresh, we should see the, the template. So we can see that this template is for tenant A with a template one. So I've done my second step, right? I have built another one, which is linked to the first one. And now it's kind of simple. It's just a few ones, right? Let's, let's get an example, which, which is pretty, um, which is more involved. Let's go to the full, the full schema. So I build a full schema uh, uh, system. If you, you, you just check it out here, it will create everything you need. So if you know about ACI, you will need a VRF, which is your layer three domain. You will uh, need a bridge domain, which is your layer two boundaries. And so it's a bridge domain. And then in that bridge domain, I have a subnet. In ACI, we don't have a concept of, of VRP or like redundancy. It's also what we call any cast gateway. So you define it where once and it, it's available everywhere. And then I have an application network profile and a few EPGs. I don't want to configure each of them, so I just created this one loop. And let's see. Let's see it in action. Fine. So for every one, every time I do a change, I commit the change. That's why you have seen me uh, get around the checkout and, and using different branches. Uh, it was just for me to make it easier and normally avoid issues. Um, and uh, so that now I'm creating the different elements that are, is a larger playbook, right? I'm, I'm going more towards the automating the whole system. So if I go back here and I go back in this guy, you can see that now it's filled up with a different information. Now if I needed to create another one, identical template, which is called, not called hybrid card, but hybrid card two or anything else, I can just copy this and just change the, and replace it with another name. And we have made some roles and we are working on additional roles for you to be able to um, use that in a more easy way. So you don't have to necessarily write the logic, but you just put a good inventory together and then it pushes all the changes. So that's kind of the different elements I wanted to mention. Now, for, um, there is one element I wanted, I wanted to add on the uh, ACI collection is that, and, and, and the MSO collection. We didn't build for every uh, little uh, nooks and crannies uh, possibilities of the platforms yet, the modules. We are looking for you to know which modules you need, and we can build additional modules. We are not limited to the modules we have. So open an issue on our GitHub uh, to, to see any issues, um, if you have any uh, modules you want. There is a module, there is a catch-all module for SCI, which, call, which is called SCI REST, or underscore REST, which allow you to do any request to any of the modules. You just have to pass, either in YAML or in JSON format, the payload you want to send. And so it's a, it's a good um, way to, to build in between until you, we have uh, released the modules you need. Okay. But don't hesitate to, to let us know which module you need. Okay, so that wraps up the demo. So a little bit on, the, on that. But what can you, you do now? What, what do you do after this, right? So there's the code of the demo. Uh, if you find the error I made, let me know. Um, so you can find us that uh, code there. There is a lot of uh, resources in uh, the Cisco side around the DevNet uh, and what we call the learning labs in DevNet, which is uh, a place where you can learn about any Cisco products, programmability, and how to automate it. And we have a great one around uh, an intro to ACI with Ansible. So it tells you how to use our, um, our uh, sandbox, which is a, an online version of our controller so that you can just try it and test it. Um, it also, uh, we also have a simulator available for AC, for the EPIC that's available for our customers. So just reach out to, to your uh, Cisco contacts for that. Um, you have the links for all the collections. 
we accept PRs if you want to contribute. This is also an open source project, so uh, we will we will review them and give you feedback. But um, we, we are never we are always open for that. It's also a blog that Ravi uh, wrote, so a lot of those details. Just a quick summary of the collections. So the one you saw today was the Epic ones, the MSO ones. I didn't do the NXOS ones, but it's available. Don't forget about it. Um, and then I just wanted to let you know that in the, we are soon gonna uh, release the DCNM and the Network Assurance Engine one. Um, so look out, look out for it. Look out for the, the content we are gonna release in the next few few weeks uh, around it. Andres. Yeah, I, I know you wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to before I uh, Intelfest. I wanted to make sure uh, around NXOS, we actually did a um, uh, a Net DevOps Live set uh, season three. Hank Preston, if you know him, I think most people do. Yeah. Um, season three is happening this right now. Uh, we were in episode one talking about Ansible network automation. If you're interested in NXOS resource modules, um, you can take a look at that. So I uh, don't want to forget about the. Uh, the other, the other side of the house here with NXOS. So um, loving the ACI stuff, thank you so much. And then the NXOS, and then I, let, I gotta get into the plug now uh, for Ansible Fest. We just announced it yesterday. Uh, it is gonna be virtual, no surprises, uh, but we actually have a call for papers, it's open. So if you are someone who uses ACI or Cisco Technologies with Ansible, we'd love to hear your story and see if you wanna actually present uh, and tell your story uh, as part of our virtual experience of Ansible Fest later this year. So. That just opened today, and uh, it'll be open for the next two months or so. But don't uh, don't wait around. Uh, we start accepting as we go. So feel free to uh, to, to go to AnsibleFest, uh, Ansible.com slash AnsibleFest, and take a look at that. Uh, that's all I wanted to say there, uh, and then we can go into some Q&A. There was, yeah. one, was yeah. one question here uh, in the session. Is, is, the, is the ACI API always backwards compatible? That is... Uh, assume you uh, assume the APIC is upgraded. Does that mean that the Ansible yeah. module doesn't work anymore, for example? So it, it should be always backward compatible. Now, I, I'm not, we are not uh, free of bugs. It could be, but you should consider that a bug and please uh, open issue with us. We, we, will, we will fix it. So normally it should be, so it should be always uh, compatible with the forward uh, versions. So as, the, as long as the so as long as the module was from the in the collection is still supported, not deprecated, it would still be supported through the. Yeah, API. correct. That's basically the way to say that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, another question was um, uh, how you, you actually touched on a little bit about uh, uh, how to get support for ACI collections. Um, you saw the links there. Uh, if you're an Ansible subscriber, you can actually submit a support case through Ansible. And we will work directly with Cisco um, to actually fi fix the issue. So if you're a, a Cisco customer as well as an Ansible customer, you can also do it that way as well. Um, if you're not an Ansible customer, uh, you'd be able to file a case uh, or file an issue in GitHub um, as Lionel stated. So Andreas, there is one more question that uh, came up, uh, which is, can we install the collections in uh, any location besides the default location, which is Ansible slash collections, you know? Right, yeah, that's a good question. So we're moving forward. Um, we, we know that virtual environments are kind of hacky. Uh, it's the, kind of the, the only thing we got today, um, but we're moving towards a kind of a cloud native Ansible world. So later this year, we're mm -hmm. now that we actually have a, now that we have 210 base, uh, you know, very slimmed down version of Ansible, we will be able to containerize uh, that instance and and virtualize it the right way, uh, and that'll be called an execution environment. So moving forward, uh, you'll start hearing this. Uh, there's uh, some PRs in Ansible, Ansible, GitHub, uh, working towards committing what an execution environment is, and that's going to be the 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 few the future de facto way of containing uh, having an actual virtual environment across your uh, across your control node. So. Hopefully that helps. Okay. Sure. And just for, just to add there, there is a, an option right now on the Ansible Dash uh, Galaxy collections to just precise that you want to install it somewhere else. Um, and that's that's a possibility. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's a uh, we only have a few minutes left. Wow, all the, all the questions come in right when we're about to stop. Oh, you guys have really good questions. What are you doing to us? Okay, um, how, how can you contribute? <laughs> Uh, how do you contribute and develop 
to the collection? What's the best way to do that? Through GitHub, right, Lionel? Yes, for the Cisco collections, uh, the best way is through GitHub. Uh, look at open a PR against an issue or just comment. Uh, you can also reach to me. Uh, I think uh, my uh, my uh, contacts will be on the in the repos. Uh, so just just contact me if you, if you have questions. But yeah, just uh, the GitHub is is the way. Okay, and we're gonna have to do one more one more question. We're gonna have to jump here. So the question was, do you recommend a collection rather than roles? Um, and it's honestly, you know, a collection contains roles. So uh, standalone roles will, aren't going away anytime soon. So if you're developing roles and publishing to Galaxy, that's totally fine. Um, the, uh, we're moving towards having everything as part of collections. So uh, the, the goal is to be able to have, uh, be able to, to have collections as uh, the de facto kind of uh, framework to delivering content. So uh, it's not really a recommendation either or. Uh, the collections are the future, though, um, because you're able to contain more things than just roles. Uh, but roles by themselves aren't going away anytime soon. Hopefully that helps. Oh, and by the way, there was a question around collections. Um, it's not 2.10 and newer, it's 2.9 and newer. So feel free to use collections. So if you're using the ACI modules today, you can use the ones that are built in to 2.9, uh, or you can use the ones, you can install 2.9 and just utilize the ones that are part of the collection that you would download uh, separately. So you can, you can actually kind of switch it on and off, right? But when we hit to 2.10, you will have to install that uh, if you if you're just running Ansible 10 base 2.10 base, or have to wait for 2.10 the distribution to have all of that. So just just a reminder: 2.2.9 and newer is what collections are supported against. Um, and I think that's all we have time for. We're um, really happy to have you. Thank you so much. We would love to do this again. Uh, let us know how we did, and um, we'll see you at Cisco Live Virtual. We'll see you at Ansible Fest Virtual. And we want to keep the, uh, the Cisco ACI love going with Ansible. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for the presenter and all the attendees. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.